now present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein passed away the tedious days on the good ship Voyager by relating his tragic experiences to Captain Walton. The Voyager was icebound somewhere near the North Pole, and day after day a howling blizzard raged. Captain Walton became worried, and the ice pack grew higher. He confided his worry to Baron Frankenstein. You look rather worried today, Captain Walton. Unfortunately, the weather shows no signs of abating, Baron Frankenstein. Have any of your men seen any trace of the monster? Has he attempted to visit the ship again? No one has seen any trace of it. Let us hope it has perished out there in the blizzard. I hope so, but I very much doubt it. Do you feel inclined to tell me some more of your story? Well, I have told you how the child William was murdered. And on examining the body, I formed the conclusion that the murder had been committed by the monster. I dashed back into the room where my wife and the burgomaster were waiting with Justine. And I told them that I was in reality responsible for the murder of William. They looked at me in some amazement. Victor, what are you saying? It is true, Elizabeth. The monster killed William, and I created the monster. He has done this for revenge because I refused to grant his request. Do you not agree with me that Justine was guilty of the murder? I swear that I am not guilty. You can release Justine. She is innocent. Burgomaster... Did I not set you and your men to search for the monster? The monster which you say you created. Ah, a likely story, Baron Frankenstein. Understand, Burgomaster, that people do not doubt my word. I say that Justine is not guilty of this murder. Take your men. Go and search for this monster. Then you will find the murderer. Had you examined the body closely, you would have seen the marks on the throat. I am sorry if I have given you offense, Baron Frankenstein. I was merely trying to do my duty. I appreciate that. Will you go now? Seek until you find this monster. Have no mercy. Shoot him on sight. We will do that. But of a truth, I have never seen the creature. Is it true that he is your creation? That you made him in a laboratory at the back of this house? It is true. Now go and do not question me further. Find him and kill him. Come, you may. There is much work to be done tonight. We will take our leave, Baron Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein, I go to my knees and thank you for saving my life. I thank you for making them release me. All right, Justine. Now go. Yes, I wish to speak to the Baron, and I do not wish to be disturbed. I will go, and believe me, I will sincerely mourn the child. What have you to say to me, Elizabeth? You are a murderer, Victor. You were right when you said you were responsible for William's death. It was through your own obstinacy, your headstrong stubbornness, that the monster was brought into being. And then I pleaded with you. We begged you not to proceed with this experiment. But you turned a deaf ear to our plea. And as a result, Julio and William have been murdered. The murder is yours, and it will forever be upon your conscience. Oh, Elizabeth, please do not turn against me. Had you heeded me, had you really loved me, you would not have proceeded with your experiment. You would have married me and destroyed the form which you had made. But you were selfish. You wished to win fame. And what is the result? Oh, I hate you, Victor. Oh, Elizabeth. You do not mean that. That child's body lies in this house, mutely crying for revenge. And yet you stand here and try to justify yourself. What can I say to you, Elizabeth? Are you going to let that monster live? Are you going to let it roam the countryside, leaving a trail of death and misery? Why are you not out searching for it? Why do you not destroy this evil thing? Very well, Elizabeth. I admit that I cannot justify myself. I will go now. 
And I shall not return until I have slain the monster. No, Victor. I do not mean what I said. If you go out there, the monster may kill you. You have shown me my duty very plainly, Elizabeth. I will go, and I trust that I will return. You must not go, Victor. The shark and the grace caused me to speak like that. I do not hate you. I love you, and I want you to stay here. It is because of my love for you I want to repair the great sin which I have committed. You cannot go. Remember, Ernest Corval is coming tomorrow. Tell him what has happened, and do not fear for me. Did you succeed in finding the monster, Baron Frankenstein? Well, I wandered out into the night. I walked through the woods. I traveled for miles until I was footsore and weary. But still I saw no trace of the being which I had created. And then, just as dawn was breaking, I came to a little clearing at the side of the woods. I looked around curiously. And then, eventually, I heard a woman sobbing. I hurried in the direction of the sound, and as I came through the woods, I saw a pleasant cottage. Outside the cottage, a woman was kneeling beside the body of a man. She was weeping bitterly. I saw What is the matter? <laughs> Can I do anything to help you? Who are you? Uh, where have you come from? My name is Baron Frankenstein. Uh, what is the matter with this man? Oh, he is dead. He has been murdered. Let me see. Oh, his name marks on his heart. This man was my husband. We lived here happily together for many years. And one day a strange creature came into the woods. He seemed to be half man, half beast, always crying to our windows. Following my husband, then he went to his work in the woods. The day my husband took his gun, he shot at the creature, and the bullet struck him. But it had no effect. The creature advanced. He seized my husband by the sword. I was powerless to interfere, and in a few minutes, he was stopped, was dead. And then the preacher ran into the woods, saying that all men were his enemies. Leaving a trail of death and misery. Oh, will you help me, sir? What can I do? I am so afraid. We will take your husband's body into the house. I will return to town and you shall come with me. It is not safe for you here. Well, what is this strange preacher? Where did he come from? He terrifies me. You will help me to carry your husband's body down gently now. Bring it in here. <laughs> Come on, this way. Yeah. We shall lay it on the couch. What can I do? Oh, Gustav, Gustav, my husband. Take comfort. Although there is little I can say. Oh, uh, listen. The monster approaches. Oh, we are not safe. We shall be killed. Greetings, Frankenstein. I thought that you would follow me. I have followed you so that I may kill you. This time I have a gun. You cannot kill me. We shall see. <laughs> I am wounded, Frankenstein, but I will not die. You are the second man who has tried to kill me today. The second man who has wounded me, who has taught me the meaning of physical pain. Let this woman be gone. We have much to say to each other. I will go. This creature is a devil. He cannot die. Poor woman. Why did you kill her husband? Because he was my enemy. All men are my enemies. And I take that gun from you, Frankenstein. You devil. You are so strong. Now we can talk. This woman will not return. She will run to the town for aid. I am the most wretched being on this earth. You are my creator, Frankenstein, and yet you despise and spurn me. You gave me life, a life that is filled with misery and wretchedness. You gave me this hideous form which turns all men against me. Do you expect me to love all men? Why did you kill a child? 
Why did you kill this poor peasant? Because he strove to kill me. Have I not the right to defend myself? Why do men strive to kill me? Why do they shudder when I appear? Is that not your fault, Frankenstein? Have I not suffered enough? Do you not think I have been punished? Everywhere I go, I seek bliss and happiness. But I am excluded because I am a hideous monster. Misery made me a fiend, but it is in your power to make me happy. Then there will be no further deaths, no further misery. When first you brought me to life, I was a poor, helpless, miserable wretch. I knew and could distinguish nothing, but I could feel pain, and I spent my days in weeping and misery. I will remember one day when I was oppressed with the cold. I was wandering in the woods. I found a fire which had been left by some beggars. I was overcome with delight at the warmth I experienced. I thrust my hand into the embers. I quickly drew it out again with a cry of pain. Thus did I learn the meaning of physical pain. But I have had greater suffering than that, Frankenstein. Wandering in loneliness. And yet you could give me happiness. I watched this couple whom you call peasants. They were happy. They loved each other. A love which I could never know. I wished to be friendly with them, but they fled from me. Viewed me with hatred and loathing. The man strove to kill me. Then he died. Tell me, foul monster. Why did you slay the child, William? Because he meant something to you. Because I wanted you to suffer as I have suffered. And I swear this, Frankenstein, if you do not give me a mate, then you shall have no mate. I shall slay your wife. You dare to threaten to kill my wife? I swear that unless you start work very soon, unless you commence to create another creature, then your wife shall die. What happened, Baron Frankenstein? Did you agree to the conditions imposed by the monster? Oh, I can tell you no more today, Captain Walton. The memory of those horrors is still too fresh upon my mind. Return later, and I will continue my story.